So good morning, good morning, church. Uh, let us settle so that we can start our service. We are a few minutes. We are a few minutes late. So uh, please, please come in, settle so that we can start. So to start, I'm going to read. Uh, uh, I'm going to read from Psalms, Psalms 95, 1 to 5. O oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come to his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful song. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth and the heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands formed dry land. So I'm going to pray before I welcome uh, the worship team. And as we pray and as we worship today, we remember the God we serve, God, God our creator. And we pray that today we may listen and that he may stir our hearts, Lord, that we may move to glorify him always with our, our lives. Mighty Father, we come before you. We thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you for the bread you've given us. And we pray, Lord God, as we come to worship you in this Sunday, that you may fill us with your spirit as we open our hearts, as we open our mouths to praise you. We pray that, Lord God, we may glorify you. Lord, we gather here and you provided us your safety. We thank you for the gift of fellowship. We thank you for the gift of family. Even as we have our meeting after church today, Lord God, we continue to praise you, Lord God, for you are with us. We pray that you may strengthen us, you may restore us, and that you may inspire us with your love. Fill us with your peace, Lord God, that as we journey onwards, we will pour out our love and we'll pour out your grace. You're going to pour out your grace through us to others. We pray that our souls may catch the wind of your spirit, Lord God, that we may take your promises to the ends of this earth. Amen. I'll welcome uh, the worship team. Well, good morning, church. Won't you stand with us as we sing our first song? The first song might be new to a few of you. It's called Christ is Risen, He's Risen Indeed. It's always good to sing about the risen Lord. And this song also talks about what that means for us in the future and the truth of that. So sing with us this morning. the 
reading will be from 1 Corinthians 15 verse 1 till 11 now I would remind you brothers of the gospel I preached to you which you received in which you stand and by which you are being saved if you hold fast to the word I preached to you unless you believed in vain for, for I, I delivered to you as of first, first importance what, what I also received, received that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than five hundred brothers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unworthy to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. By the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace toward you and me was not in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them. Though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we preach and so we believe. What gift of grace is Jesus my Redeemer? There is no more for heaven now to give. He is my joy, my righteousness and freedom, my steadfast love, my deep and boundless peace. To this I hold, my hope is only Jesus. For my life is wholly bound to His. Oh, how strange and divine I can sing. All is mine, yet not I, but through Christ in me. Savior, He will stay. 
it sing up in our eyes. Thank you. Thank you very much to our, our worship team. Quite, uh, quite uplifting uh, messages of worship. So thank you very much for, for that. We move to the next part of the service uh, whereby we welcome any new visitors. So if you are here for the first time or if you've been away, so you've been away for uh, maybe more than three months, uh, if you could, uh, you'll, raise a, you'll raise your hand. So I'll, I'll start with my left. So you're here for the first time or you've been away for a long time. Someone will come to you with a mic. And uh, if you don't mind, if you, you don't mind it, you could uh, say who you are and uh, where you're coming from. So, yeah, there's a, there's a hand uh, lifted. So someone will be running towards you. Okay, maybe not running walking towards you with a mic. So, some, some. Yeah, Hi. Hi. <laughs> I'm Pim, and um, we live in Leidschendam, and it's my first time in church for many years. And my daughter is thinking about joining a church, so we are looking around, and we're very happy to be here. Thank you very much. Welcome. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else to my left? Okay, we come to the middle. So, anyone in the middle? I think there's a hand... Uh, or someone is being, uh, yeah, no? No, no hands, everybody's shaking their heads. Okay, let's go to my right, that is your left. Yeah, towards the end, two, two hands raised. Maybe you can continue raising it so that, yeah. Hey, good morning. Uh, I'm Joshua, this is my wife, Erin. Uh, we're visiting the Salmons family uh, from the Kentucky, from the States. So, happy to be here. Oh, welcome, welcome. welcome. Hello. Uh, uh, my name is John. I am from Syria, and uh, I'm happy to be here. Welcome, welcome. welcome. So, is there any other person to the, on this side? No. So we have a meeting after church, but uh, maybe just immediately after, if you could see my brother Tenashe, maybe you stand so that they can see you, is uh, the elder responsible for the welcomes. Tenashe will want to meet you, to take your name, your contact, just for, to keep correspondence. 
So we go for the offerings and tithes. So this is the second part of our session. We still have the hybrid system. So the people helping with the tithes and offering, if you could come forward. So give them some moments. So I see it's, uh, it's our youth and our, uh, oh nice. Also Christina in the school. So we're still having a physical system and also, also through Tiki, so you'll see a tiki, tiki sign right in front of you. So I pray. Faithful Father, we come before you and thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord God, because everything we have comes from you. More so, we thank you for the gift of eternal life. Lord God, thank you for your faith, faithfulness because we can always trust upon you, Lord God. We can always rely upon you because you are our provider. We pray, Lord God, that the gifts we, you've given to us, we may give to your service, Lord God, with willing hearts. And continue to pray, Lord God, that the gifts we may give, Lord God, may be acceptable uh, in your sight, Lord God. So, Father, we pray. Amen. So, as the offerings are, are being uh, collected, children are free to go to a Sunday school. So to, today, uh, the children are going to be learning from the book of uh, Acts, where Peter learned that Jesus came for, for all, not just the Jews, but all. And as the children go, i also going to request that uh, if Christ is staring upon you to serve with our children, we are, we are short of uh, teachers. So if, if Christ is starting upon you to serve with your children. Uh, please, uh, maybe you can see me after, after the service or even next week. Then uh, I can explain to you how you could serve for the children. And then we come to the part where we pray, the pastoral prayer. But before, before we have the, I give the detail about the suffering church, I'll also want us to remember members of our congregations who are not feeling well. There are quite a number of us who are ailing. And today, today we are going to pray for them. And we pray that uh, God may extend uh, his hand and uh, lift, them, lift them up. So the suffering church for today, I don't know if the, the slide will come, but the suffering church we are praying for today is uh, Tunisia. I have to come close to this. I know my voice is shifting, so I'll be a bit disciplined, so I move close. So the church we are praying for is uh, Tunisia. Tunisia is a country in uh, Northern Africa, and predominantly Muslim country, although there's a tiny minority that is Christians. Now, if you are foreign and uh, you are serving in a foreign church uh, in uh, Tunisia, you'll enjoy relative freedom as long as you don't evangelize. Evangelism is not tolerated at all in Tunisia. But for Tunisians, who are supposed to be Muslims, when they turn to Christianity, then it becomes very, very tough. They face very, very high levels of uh, hostility. Some of them uh, moved from their homes. And it's getting worse in the southern part of uh, Tunisia, where you have the Islamic, uh, Islamic militants. So there's been an increase uh, in uh, persecutions of uh, Christians, especially in that part of uh, Tunisia where the, a number of churches have been attacked. So today we are going to also pray for God to remember the believers in Tunisia and that he may sustain them. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we lift up those among us today who are not feeling well, who are facing various illnesses. We pray that you may give them comfort we pray that you may give them hope, you may give them courage that they need today and every day. But we pray more so that your spirit may raise like a mighty wave, Lord God, and come and restore their health, Lord God, if this is your will. We pray that you may lift them up, you may sustain them. And dear Father, also, you are the perfecter and founder of our faith. And Lord God, You've taught us that those who follow you, those who follow you through our Lord, 
and Savior Jesus Christ are going to be persecuted and oppressed because of their faith. And we see this happening to our brothers and sisters in Tunisia. Lord God, we pray for these Christians in Tunisia. We pray for your protection. We pray that, Lord God, they may know the hope you give and that they may feel connected with you and in their suffering, Lord God. And that, Lord God, you may sustain them, Lord God. Strengthen them, Lord. Father, show them an increase of grace, Lord God. And Father, we pray that you may soften the hearts of those who are persecuting them, if it is your will. We pray this trusting and believing in your holy name. Amen. Yeah, you want to come? Yeah, yeah okay. please. Well, good morning, church. <laughs> All right, uh, last minute announcement about our wedding. Uh, th my name is Oscar, by the way. This is my wife, Chidema. Can you reach? <laughs> 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 yeah well like I said a last minute announcement uh, next week on Saturday April 20th we'll have our wedding here in Trinity our Christian wedding and we cannot wait and uh, there's a QR code here and if you scan it there's more information on the website you don't need to sign up or anything uh, it's just so that we have an idea how many people are coming but we got that covered and um, Jadama you got something else? Um, yes, so <laughs> please, please look at the website. There's a lot of information there. Um, like you said, you don't have to RSVP. Um, and I just wanted to very briefly um, touch on uh, certain situations. Obviously, we planned this. Um, we've been planning this for a while before certain situations came to light. So we would just like to say that, yes, Pastor Dave will be officiating, uh, but we are also very happy that all the elders, including Brother Aline, will also be involved. And for us, it's not really about us or who's doing the readings or who's officiating. It's about the glorification of Christ through the holy rite of marriage. So that's what we are focusing on, and we are walking in faith on this. And um, yes, we would love to see you all there. So that's my first announcement done. So th thank you. Th th thank you very much. For, thank you very much for that. Can, can you hear me? Oh, it's a bit. Uh, you can hear me? Okay. So that's one announcement. So pencil, pencil in your diaries. This coming Saturday. Yeah. QR code, maybe you'll flash it again so people can, can take it. Let's, uh, let's uh, celebrate our brothers and sisters and as they move the next stage of their life. Chidima serves with us in, uh, in Sunday school, so yeah. The second announcement is uh, the members meeting taking place today for the members right, right after, uh, after the service. So please, after the service, uh, stay around. I think maybe we'll, we'll take a 10 minute break and then uh, come back uh, right after. And then uh, we also want to thank those of you who participated uh, last week in the International Food Fest. Really, we celebrated our oneness in, in Christ. So thank you very much for those who attended. Thank you very much for those who organized. And thank you very much for those who, can, who came. Because if people don't come, then we don't have such an event. So I, I look forward to another one like that. Then also, we really want to thank you for the celebration of uh, Jab's uh, life service on uh, Friday. Jap is no longer with us, so we really thank God for the service on Friday. And also, Jap's family uh, sends uh, their thanks to the, to the church. Then the final announcement is uh, relating to the women's, the next women's uh, uh, Bible study for this week. So 19th, February 19th, from uh, 7.30 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. This is the same time where we have the youth fellowship. So if you are dropping your kids you are, and you're a woman, you are welcome to also join the women's uh, Bible study. And that's all for the announcement. So I take this opportunity to, to welcome our preacher, Ken. Thank you. 
Thanks, brother. My name is Ken. That's my wife, Julie. I work at, at, uh, I work at Trinity. Where do I work? I work at Tyndale Bible. I work at Tyndale Theological Seminary. I really appreciate the fact that you guys pray for the persecuted church. That's a big deal. Uh, we met with a student this morning. We have a couple of students at our seminary from the Manipur area of India. It's not an area that I was familiar with, but uh, it's, um, it's a very Christian part of India, and they are under very serious persecution. And uh, two of his friends were killed last night by um, uh, non-Christian people from another village. Uh, horrifically killed and mangled uh, awful situation so keep praying for the persecuted church if you can think of it the area is called Manipur and uh, we have a student who would appreciate your prayers I'm going to pray for us and me Father please be with me now be with us as we look at your word we pray that I would speak truthfully and clearly and uh, that we would know your son more and honor him and we pray this in his name amen well i am going to push a button and we are going to go into a time machine i realize that was a little bit weird for some of you but that's okay i'll only do it once i might do it again we're going to go into a time machine and we're going to go back to september of 1980 it was a very good time. The 80s were a good decade. And I want to, uh, in a moment, I want to show you a picture, just in a moment, I want to show you a picture of what I did for the whole of pretty much the year of 1980. All right? Let's go to the videotape. There it is. I hope you can see it. I'm not even going to turn around. But that is me. I want you to notice the full head of hair, as they would say in Canada, the tremendous flow. I want you to notice that. I had the opportunity to live on a sailboat for one year, and I sailed from America to Australia. I'm not going to tell you the story. I might tell you a little bit of a story about it later on, but if I preach here again, I'll tell you more stories about it. The guy next to me is Don Diedrich. I'm going to tell you about Don. He's the reason for the picture, but I realize it's a little bit awkward having a picture of me with my shirt off, so can we fix that? Great. Okay, we fixed it. Good. Yeah, that's good. I don't think anybody's going to worry about Don with his shirt off. He was 68 years old, so I think that's. Uh, I hope that's okay. But that is uh, uh, near the island of Mbenga in Fiji. We sailed around Fiji for four months. It was an absolutely magic, fantastic, unbelievably brilliant time to be a 20-year-old young man living on a sailing yacht fishing, swimming, snorkeling, you name it, it was great. And there's a lot of things I will remember from that trip. There's a lot of things I won't. As I get older, my brain's going. But I will not forget speaking with Don. We talked a lot. I had just become a Christian, and I was, as they say in America, full on. And Don, not a Christian. And uh, every night, I would... Uh, get off my shift at 8 o'clock in the evening, and he would come on. I had the 4 to 8 shift. He had the 8 to 12 shift. And Don would, would come on, and we would sit, and we would talk for about, you know, half an hour, hour, just depends. And I don't know if you are a sailor, but it was one of those magic nights. It's warm. It's clear. There's a, a, a wind, which is a really good thing if you're trying to sail. And it's just fantastic. And Don and I are talking about faith. And I said to Don, Don, what would it take for you to believe in Jesus? What would it take? And he said, I'm not going to believe in Jesus. I, I, I am never going to believe in Jesus. And I, I, I was a young Christian. I hadn't met that many people as a new Christian. It's a long story, but basically I became a Christian and then hopped on a sailing boat. So that's kind of my story. And I said, hang on, Don. Jesus, there's nothing Jesus could do for you to believe in him. And here's his words, and I'll never forget them. He said, if Jesus were to walk across the ocean right now and say, hi, Don, I still wouldn't believe in him. And I'm like, 
whoa, that is serious unbelief. I kind of hoped that Jesus would actually fulfill that and walk on my, get a Don, and walk by. I, I think that'd be really interesting to see what, ooh, I might rethink what I just said. Don, hard heart. We all know people who are at, kind of their heart is at various stages. Some of you know people like that. There's just, there's just nothing that you can do to show them. You can love them. You can, you can show them Jesus' difference in your life. You can bring them here and they can meet all you good people. And uh, it's just hard. It's a heart of stone. There's other people who kind of, they want to believe, but they need proof. Uh, if you could just show me, if, if Jesus would just appear to me, that's what I was for a long time. If, if, if Jesus would just come into my bedroom and say, yo, I would believe. That was me. Now we're going to look at uh, one of the most famous guys uh, of this variety. And, and, and you probably know him, even if you're not all that familiar with, with Christianity or the Bible. You, you might have heard of a guy named Doubting Thomas. Right? It's kind of part of the English vernacular. Doubting Thomas. Don't be a Doubting Thomas. Thomas is famous because he is surrounded by people who believe. And these people really believe. They've seen Jesus. We've seen Jesus. We've seen Jesus. We've seen Jesus. Mary and other women, we've seen Jesus. Peter and John, we've seen Jesus. The two people on the road to Emmaus, we've seen Jesus. A group of people in a, in a house the week before, we've seen Jesus. And Thomas says, nah, nah. And they're like, man, come on. They kind of want to bang his head against the table and say, come on, man. He's alive. And, and now we kind of remember all those weird things he said that he was going to die and then rise. It's actually starting to make a little bit more sense. Thomas, no. Nah. No. Nah. No. Nah. Now, this, this may be a bit of an odd um, illustration, but I, I think about faith as... As I, I don't know if you're, if, if you're addicted like every other human being on the planet to those kind of 20 to 30 second video clips that have just swept through the world and, 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 and we watch. But, but, but the ones I often watch, kind of gives you an insight to my nutty personality, is people jumping off cliffs. And, and there's all sorts of different people who jump off cliffs. You've got the, the whole series of videos of people just jumping off and doing flips and back, what's called, I used to call it a gainer where they jump off and they back, and you're like yeah, and then you get the other people, they, they stand on the cliff and they kind of go and then they go back, and then there's the real awkward ones, uh, people who probably shouldn't be standing next to the cliff, there's one where this person probably shouldn't be doing it, kind of falls on their knees and then kind of rolls and uh, belly flops into the water then there's another one where there's two people holding hands and they say go and the one person doesn't go and the girl smacks into the cliff there's, there's another one where a person kind of runs and then stops but trips and then kind of rolls down oh it's ugly it's ugly and so my question for us all is who are you where are you and what do you want to be I'm hoping that you want to be one of those people who just jump off into Jesus. Yes, I trust. And I think that's what our passage, which I'm going to read to us in a moment, I think that's what our passage is saying. Don't, don't be one of those people who just kind of flop down or go to the edge or, or... No. Jesus says, stop doubting and believe. Now let me read you the passage. It, it'll be on the slide. Hopefully it's big enough. I, I kind of, I'm not real good with PowerPoint. But if you've got a Bible or a device, it's John chapter 20, verses 24 to 31. I think it's continuing on in the series uh, that, that we're doing here in church. John chapter 20, verses 24. 
Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we've seen the Lord. But he said to them, nah. Unless I see the nail marks in his, in his hands and I put my finger where the nails were and I put my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again. Ah, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came in and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, I, I got to stop here. It's just, he, he greets them and then he looks at Thomas. I just love it. He greets all, whoever's in the room. There's probably a bit of a crowd. And then he looks at Thomas and you can just see Thomas going, oh. back to the reading. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and, and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. That's us, by the way. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. Now Thomas demands proof. Jesus demands faith. That, that's kind of the, if there was a heading or a title for the sermon, if, if, if you need a thesis statement, that's what the sermon is. Thomas demands proof. Jesus demands faith. Now, now, the Bible is an awesome book. And we don't know a lot about Thomas, right? And th there are some guys in the Bible who I think are in heaven, and they're kind of, they're, they're, they're in heaven having a great old time. I want to be clear on that. It's perfect. It's awesome. But you just kind of wonder if they're like, yeah, I'm that guy. <laughs> you know, I'm that guy. And so I wonder if Thomas is a bit of, yeah, I'm that guy. Because Thomas occurs, uh, he occurs a few times, but it's, it's something like, and Thomas was there, or something like that. But there are, uh, 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 with this instance, there's two other ones. And they're kind of classic, because Jesus' friend Lazarus has died. You probably know the story, John 11. And Jesus waits and he says, we're going to go back, and they know that if they go back to that area, there's some trouble. The people there don't like Jesus. And so Jesus says, let's go, and, and, and we're going to help my friend Lazarus. And Thomas says this. He says, let us go also that we might die. Like, <laughs> I, I'm going to refer to Thomas from now on as chuckles. I think that's what I'm going to call uh, Thomas. Then in John chapter 14, we got another one just like it, where Jesus is like, my father's preparing a mansion, and I, it has many rooms, and I'm going to go, and I'm going to prepare this mansion for you. Kind of a classic, often a funeral passage about how uh, uh, eternal life is just going to be fantastic. And Jesus says, I'm going to go, it's going to be great. And then Thomas says, we don't know where you're going. How can we know where you're going? We don't know what, what, what. Jesus looks at Thomas. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Come on, man. And you could just see Thomas going, oh, oh. Thomas is surrounded by people who've seen the Lord. He is surrounded by them. And they're going to give him very clear and graphic pictures. We went to the tomb. The cloths were there. Jesus wasn't. I went, and there was angels, and I spoke with angels. And then I went, and I spoke with this guy. I thought he was the gardener. Can you believe it? But it was actually Jesus when he started to speak. It was Jesus. And we were walking down the road, and this guy comes up, and, and he starts to talk to us. And then he, he breaks bread, and he prays. 
and our eyes open and it's Jesus. And Thomas says, no, not. Now, Thomas is a bit better than my friend Don. And that, that was a long time ago. Don has met Jesus. I, 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 I'm hoping it went well, but I have my doubts. Thomas was better than my friend Don because at least Thomas said, if I can get some proof, I will believe. Now, Jesus comes, and it's a, it's a, it's a fantastic story. It's, 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 it's one of those stories you just wish you were there. It's what, like a lot of the Bible stories. Th this is one in particular, I think. It, you're in this room. It's probably stuffy. You know, it's, a, it's a, probably a clay type of room, maybe. It, there might be air, but I think they're scared, the disciples. The doors are locked. I think John is telling us that, that, that they've seen Jesus, but they're still afraid. And and. John says this kind of odd little beautiful phrase, even though the doors were locked, Jesus came. Now, does he walk through the walls? I, I, I don't know. I have a feeling he unlocked the doors. I think that's what Jesus did. Jesus says, prison gates aren't going to keep me and, and my angels away from you guys when you're in prison and this door cannot keep me out. There, there is no door that can keep me out. I'm the door for crying out loud. And so the door is locked. Jesus comes in, and he says what he has said before, a very loaded phrase, peace. Peace. Don't be afraid. Don't, don't fear them. Remember what I said to you? When they persecute you, I'll, I'll give you words. My, my spirit will be with you. I, I will be with you no matter what happens. Peace I give you. And he says to Thomas, put your hand here. Now what's interesting is, John doesn't tell us whether he does it or not. I, I have a feeling that, that Thomas did not touch the hand in the side. We don't know. I'm just, I'm, I'm speculating. But I think that it, it was one of those situations like you kind of see in the movies or television show where Thomas is just like, if my mouth could open any... And then when Jesus says, you know, touch my hand, my side... He just, Thomas, I, I am so sorry. Was he sorry? Was he joyful? Was he weeping tears of repentance, weeping tears of joy? Yes. Yes to all above. Now, here's the thing. I, I've been a Christian for a long time, 43 years. I love it. But, but God is very different and those of us who know God, and I think that's probably a lot of us, we can testify to the fact that when we try to make God what we want him to be, we fail. When we try to demand things from God, we fail. When we utter statements like, the God I believe in, that's a wrong statement. The God who I would believe in, wouldn't, let Christian villages be attacked by another village. But that's just not true. God is, is so manifestly different. He, he, is, he is unlike, I think, a, a little bit of an overstatement, but forgive me, but he's unlike anything we can imagine. I mean, Jesus comes, and he, he's just full of mystery at every turn. The, the things he does, the people he visits, the way he spends his time, it's very different to what you and I would imagine God coming down to earth would do. And then Jesus resurrects from the, the dead, and he doesn't hang out with the disciples 24-7. He comes and goes. It's, it's, it's different. He, he, he does what he wants. So he sees them, and then John says, a week later, what did Jesus do during that week? I don't know. We don't know. God is very 
different. And it's why the Bible calls the nation of Israel wrestlers. Genesis chapter 32. I'd love to, to, to preach a sermon sometime on that. Genesis chapter 32. I, I can't spend a lot of time on it, but it's, again, one of these really quirky, interesting stories in the Bible where this terrified guy, Jacob, he's about to face his brother with an army. He's got reason to be scared. It's, it's legit. And he's terrified, so he decides to spend the night by himself. Uh, I don't, Genesis doesn't say this, but I think maybe to pray and to kind of work through some stuff with his brother in his head. And God shows up, and they wrestle all night. It's one of these stories that's just magnificently, I'll use the word quirky. And then God says to Jacob, you're not going to be called Jacob anymore. You're going to be called the wrestler. And you're going to be called Israel. And, and Israel, the people of God, their name is people who wrestle with God because he's sometimes hard to understand. He, he, he does things that you and I often wonder about. And sometimes he lets us see in the past, that's why he did that. But sometimes he doesn't. And sometimes we just say, the ways of the Lord are not our ways. God is, 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 is just mysterious and beautiful. His ways are higher than our ways. And we have to wrestle with God. And where we have to land, we have to land in faith. Now, Augustine, Augustine was a, a, a Christian who lived a long, long time ago. One of these very smart, influential Christians who, quite frankly, I don't know a lot about. I'm not an Augustine expert. Probably one or two of you here are. But Augustine said something that you're going to need to wrestle with. Okay. See, uh, hopefully I can explain it clearly. He says, you don't understand and then believe. He says you believe in order to understand. That, that's quite a different take on most of our world. Most of our world, our friends, or maybe yourself, you want proof. You want a sign. Give me a dream. Speak to me. Uh, ring the phone, uh, heal me of this, heal my friend of this, whatever. We, we, we demand a sign, or we, we weigh up all the proof. I, I, is Jesus better than Buddha? Is Jesus better than whatever? I, is he who he says he is? Now, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. That is an important journey. I've done it. Many of you have done it. I am not knocking it. But I know that when I finally jumped then I began to understand suddenly suddenly my mind could think through okay who is God who is Jesus what does it mean to follow him once I was in faith I could really start to go on the road to figure out who Jesus really is and so Jesus says to Thomas, you got to believe, bro. you got to believe, man. And if you, were, if you were with us at Good Friday, I talked about how John has these little kind of phrases in his book that, that uh, John was an incredible author, and he, 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 there's these themes in his book. And if you were to read the Gospel of John, really good thing to do if, you know, from cover to cover, doesn't actually take you all that long. You're going to see belief, 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 belief. God so loves the world that whoever believes shall live. And John, uh, God, uh, uh, Jesus says to Thomas, "You got to believe," and he does. He does. And Jesus says a very good verse for us. He says, you've seen me, Thomas, and good work. You believe, okay? You believe. That's fantastic. 
But, you know, there will be a group of people in a, in a, in a, in a, in a part of the Netherlands who will not see me because they are going to live 2,000 years after this conversation. And they are going to believe in me. And those people are really, really blessed because they are living by faith. And that's what I love. I love it when people trust me in the same way you do. You're like Jesus in that. We've all said to people, hey, trust me, trust me, trust me. And it bothers us when people don't trust us. When you're like, come on, man, you got to trust me. Jesus says, you got to trust me. And then there's those famous verses at the end where John gives a, uh, he often gives a little summary kind of statement. And, and here's one of them. He says, you know, Jesus performed lots of other signs in, in front of the disciples, and I didn't record them. He says in the next chapter, if I was to record everything Jesus did, that's a lot of books, too many books to write. My hands are sore. He says, Jesus did a lot of, a lot of signs, but I, I've written so that you will believe. And by believing, you will have, and there's one of those John words, life. You will have life in his name. Now, if you are not a believer, you come to church, which is great. It's a really good thing to do, if, even if you're not an unbeliever, uh, if you're, even if you are an unbeliever. That's a really good thing to do. Surround yourself with people of faith. That's a good thing. Or if you're new, somebody dragged you along to church. You will, uh, I'm going to say th three super quick things. You will never have all your questions answered. You never will. And, and ironically, Christians often have a lot of questions because we start to, you know, get to know Jesus and we think, God and man? How is that? So I had that with some students just on Wednesday. They believed that Jesus was God and man, but we're like, one student said to me, was Jesus like the ultimate multitasker? You know, there's, there's just a whole bunch of questions. If God loves us, then why? There's a whole host of questions. You will never have all your questions answered. The only time that you will come close is when you stand before Jesus yourself. And then you're going to be thinking about some other things, not the questions you had. Suddenly, the questions you had are going to become very insignificant as you stand before the creator of everything. Now, if you are a person who doesn't yet believe, read John's gospel. It's a trustworthy, reliable account from eyewitnesses. A lot of eyewitnesses. We read Luke's account, where Luke says... I have carefully investigated. I have spoken with people who saw these events, and I've written you an orderly account. They are magnificent, historically accurate documents. And finally, like our legal system runs on, you've got to trust the witnesses. You've got to read, read the Gospels and say, these people were there. Now, if you are a Christian person and you are doubting, I probably don't need to tell you that, that that's a real buzzword in, in kind of Christian circles. Uh, so supposedly with the rise of postmodernism, there's now been a rise of skepticism and doubt, and that is infiltrated into the church. If you are somebody who doubts, you got to read your Bible. you, you, you got to read your Bible. And you got to say, oh, Lord, help my unbelief. That is your prayer. You pray that every single morning. You wake up every single morning, and before you do anything, and certainly before you look at your phone, you say, Lord, 
help my unbelief. That is a prayer that God often really likes to answer. And then you grab your Bible or, you know, get a cup of coffee or do whatever you need to do. Grab your Bible and you say, Lord, help my unbelief. The other thing I want to encourage you to do is I don't, I don't want to say that doubt is a sin, but you need to attack it as if it was a sin. I hope my words were, were clear. I am not saying that you are sinful because you're doubting. But in the same way you would attack a sin, attack this. Why do I doubt? What, what is causing me to doubt? What, what are areas, situations, people, or websites that I need to avoid? Because they're, they're, they're clouding my mind, they're clogging my mind, they're, they're darkening my mind. In this day and age, everybody's opinion seems to be as valid as everybody else's opinion. And there's a little bit of truth in that, but not everybody's an expert. So, so there are a lot of things that we need to turn off. And we need to say, what, why, am, why am I doubting? Find some good people to talk with. There are people here who have the gift of faith. It's a spiritual gift. I think I have the gift of faith. And it, it means that we may be a little clumsy in understanding doubt, because we may not have gone through it. And Jude says to people like me and others, be merciful to those who doubt. But you may want to have a, a coffee regularly with somebody who's got strong faith. And you may want to just talk about your unbelief. Talk about where you struggle. Uh, maybe this person can give you some very trustworthy, helpful resources to go to that you can read through. Ultimately, your aim is to stop doubting and believe. Because pretty soon, you're going to wrap up your series on kind of the Easter story, the, the, what's called the passion of Christ, his, his trial, death, resurrection. But ultimately, not only is the story true, but it's like of a truth that is so incredibly world-changing and life-changing. And Jesus says, I want you to believe it. Now, I'm going to shut my notes, which I tell my public speaking class is a sign that you're finished, but I'm going to tell you a story. Okay, so don't get your hopes up too much. I wasn't on that sailboat. Uh, that was actually the second sailboat. I was on another sailboat. And we were sailing from Cabo San Lucas, Mexico to Hawaii. We had sailed about, uh, about 1,500 miles, you know, 23, 2,400 kilometers. And we were smack dab in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. And so it's, it's, you know, there's a lot of nothing this way and a lot of nothing that way. The wind dropped. There were four guys on this boat. Don wasn't on this boat. There were four young guys, and the wind dropped. Three days. We're going nuts. So the uh, skipper says, let's have a bit of a competition. Let's break the tedium. And so we had a whole bunch of different events. We had kind of a sprint, and we had a long jump off the, off the deck, and we had a high diving competition. And uh, the skipper says, I want to do one more. And he said, here's what we're going to do. The three of you guys, there were four of us, the three of you guys, you position yourselves on the boat, and I'm going to stay here just in case, and you jump off, and the guy who swims the furthest away wins. Now, I was, uh, I was 20 years old, totally insane, and I looked at the scoreboard, and I realized that I was losing, so I thought, I am going to swim fast. I am not going to turn around. And so I jumped off and I swam. Whoa! I swam longer than that. 
and I turn around and I look at the boat. The boat's about that big. Now, I know what you're thinking, and you are correct. There are two thoughts going through my brain, and what is the first thought that many of you are thinking, and you are correct? The first thought is, for the older crowd, dun 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 That's the first thought. There is 30, for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, talk to somebody who looks a little older, and they will fill you in. One of the delights of the 70s. And dun dun dun, and I'm thinking, I'm insane. That's what I'm thinking. But then the second thought is, that's where I belong. What am I doing here? Like, that is everything that is true and good, and that will take me home. If a little puff of wind were to come, I could never catch the boat. Even with no sails, just a little puff of wind will, will move a boat relatively quickly. And so... I was like one of those cartoon movies. Hopefully, I won't hit the microphone. I was one of those cartoon movies, you know, blah, 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 you know, and his arms are going like this, and there's just like big windmills, blah, 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 and I'm back to the boat. And I got on the boat, and I thought, I will never do that again. I will never put myself in a position where everything I know to be true and good and will take me home can go without me. And so I, I think ultimately that's, that's our story. Jesus says, believe, and, and I'll take you home. And when you get home, no more doubt, no more fear, no more struggles, no more anything that's bad. All your questions will be answered. All your fe fears will be stilled. Everything that has caused you doubt whew, will be swept away. Let's have a, let's have a time of prayer. Uh, and this may be a time for you to sit in, in peaceful quiet, something we don't do a lot. This might be a time for you to say, Lord, help my unbelief. This might actually be a time for some of, some of you to say, Lord, I actually believe now. Jesus, help our unbelief. Help us to stop doubting and believe. Send your spirit upon us now. Give us faith. Give us faith to face this day, this coming week, the rest of this year. To our brothers and sisters who are struggling with doubt, please touch them in a deep and real way. To our friends and family who just do not believe, oh Lord, please open their eyes. Help us to be, to be your hands and your feet and your mouth. Lord Jesus, we thank you and praise you for your resurrection from the dead. And we pray this in your name. Amen.
Church, won't you stand with us as we sing our final song? chapter 3. May Christ dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth, the length, and height, and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Amen. Amen.